reality. We interrupt this program to bring and you say third coast. <laughs> yeah. It's such a delight to be here tonight. Utilizing the gift of song that I've been blessed with to bring to y'all so much joy. And you know, like I know, don't nothing bring more joy than a clean cut New Orleans boy, huh? They say I wouldn't do it again. Hey, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Concrete Reality TV, where we strive to know more and do more with what we know. I'm honored to have the opportunity to sit down and interview someone that was one of the major influences in my musical foundation. I have Director of Choral Music Activities at the historic HBCU Prairie View A&M University, the highly talented and impactful educator, pianist, singer, choral conductor, Dr. A. Jan Taylor. What's up, Ms. Taylor? Welcome to the show. Hi, Ephraim. It is such a pleasure <laughs> to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, my pleasure. I'm glad that you came to join me. Um, like I said, it's supposed to be me and my brother, but oh, Cutter, as we call him on the show, he, he wasn't able to, to come in. He had to go work. That's <laughs> How important. you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. Like oh, I said before, good. it's summertime. I'm uh, just really relaxing and uh, enjoying these these days. Oh, I figured that you'd be always working year round up there at Prairie View. Well, yeah, well, I do other things. Um, I just did a spent a week uh, working as a clinician and conductor at a choir camp for the United Methodist Church. So okay. that was an entire week. So I just you know got back from there. And so I'm just going to do a few days. And yeah, there's some things uh, that I do uh, mm -hmm. throughout the year, but actually being on campus and teaching classes, yeah, I'm off for the summer. So what do you normally do in the summers to kind of relax and, and take the edge off? Well, uh, take vacation. Uh, you know, my husband and I will usually go someplace, sometimes far, sometimes mm -hmm. just close. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a granddaughter. We spend time together, uh, you know, just having a good time with her. And then I also uh, do writing and I enjoy oh, right? museums. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Writing um, uh, about music. Yeah. OK. Uh huh. Do you have any literature out? Well, uh, working on a couple of projects right now for a choral journal and, and then uh, submitting an article for uh, a, a book about uh, women conductors. Mm -hmm. OK. So those are the projects that I'm working on this summer. Uh, how close are you to being finished? Well, I'm just actually just getting started uh, with the writing. Yeah, I've been doing a little research mm -hmm. and then we'll start with the writing. So this is your first uh, published work outside of your doctorate, uh, what, doctoral thesis? Uh, yeah, well, I've done some other things. I've written uh, liner notes for um, uh, for recordings um, mm -hmm. and, and for for ensembles, program mm -hmm. notes and things like that. Yeah. But this will be the first major I guess, in a while. Uh, ah, yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Well, thank you. I'll keep you posted. Yeah, because we'll definitely throw some support. And then we have to try to bring you back on so you can promote the book. Okay. Yeah, that'd be fun. So we've um, started doing this Houston Hometown Heroes edition of Concrete Reality TV, where basically we're just trying to go throughout Houston, talk to a lot of people that inspired us, and, you know, just talk about where they came from with their, you know, how they got there. Because a lot of times, like I told you before, when we spoke on the phone, we didn't know enough to ask any questions about who you were when you were teaching us. <laughs> it was like, hey, yeah. it's all about me. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, well, I'm glad to be a part of this series, Houston Hometown. Okay. Yep, Hometown yeah. Hero. So you're yeah. the first person on here. Uh, you're kicking it off. Oh, I'm honored. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep, definitely. I, I thought um, you thought you came to my mind um, as soon as we started talking about it. I was like, OK, Miss Taylor, definitely. And then we'll just work our way through the line with all of the others that, you know, come to mind. Awesome. So um, I guess we can start, you know, where were you born? OK, I am a native Houstonian. I okay. was born here in Houston, raised in Third Ward area. Um, went to HISD public schools. Uh, mm -hmm. My neighbor back then, we all went to our neighborhood schools. Mm -hmm. I went to GBM Turner Elementary, which is now has been consolidated with Lockhart Elementary. So now it's Lockhart. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and I went one year to McGregor uh, Elementary. Mm -hmm. I went to Lanier Junior High. Uh, now it's Lanier Middle School. And at the time I went, it was just being uh, integrated. 
Uh, so that was an interesting experience all in oh, itself. Wow. Yeah, and then uh, I'm in the, of, of the second graduating class from HSPVA, and that's amazing. We just celebrated the 50th year. I can't believe I'm saying that. 50th wow. year anniversary of the opening of the school. Now, I didn't graduate 50 years ago, but <laughs> <close enough. laughs> but uh, yeah, the school was uh, open 50 years ago and there were some wonderful celebrations. And I got a chance to, um, as a guest of Pat Bonner, who was there most of those years, mm -hmm. uh, you know, participate in some of the events surrounding that. And then uh, I went to the University of Houston for mm -hmm. undergrad because that's where Pat Bonner and Jean Galloway went. Those were my yeah. high school choir directors. And I, I did not know that. Yeah, and I wanted to be just like them. So uh -huh. I followed, they were so inspirational to me that mm -hmm. I wanted to go to school where they went. And so that's how I went to the University of Houston for undergrad. I got a degree in uh, vocal music, teacher mm -hmm. education is what the degree was called back then, the uh, mm -hmm. Bachelor of Music. And then uh, started teaching I started out at uh, two elementary schools. Back then, you, you could do halftime at one school, halftime at another. So I taught mm -hmm. at two elementary schools in HISD, Allen Elementary and Memorial Elementary. I think mm -hmm. Allen is gone now, but Memorial is still exists. Mm -hmm. And then after a couple of years, I started uh, a master's degree in vocal performance at Prairie View. So I got that degree while I was teaching, had a family, had uh, two children, married to Jerry Taylor. Jerry. And uh, I was also doing uh, the preparatory choir for the Singing Boys of Houston. I was mm -hmm. just reminded of that because I just recently had some experiences where I, um, you know, happened upon some former members. So that's been on my mind. And I uh, also worked as in churches. I, I worked at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church mm -hmm. as a pianist and eventually a choir director from the time I was 14 years old up wow. until uh, I think I did that for about 20, 22 years. Uh, after I got my master's, uh, I went on to teach at Johnson Middle School, where you were a student of mine. Yeah, because that's yeah. where I was uh -huh. trying to remember that. I was like, yeah. I know I think I met her first at Johnston. Well, actually, I knew you when you were a little boy because, you know, I knew your mother. Oh. Uh, Ivory was a member of Wheeler Avenue. From Wheeler, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I actually knew you before that. But, that's uh, crazy. You and I, yeah, exactly. But you and I, <laughs> uh, as, a, as a student, is when you remember uh, our so click. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you were in the boys' choir, mm -hmm. and I also taught uh, piano at Johnston. Yep, that's yeah. exactly. Yep, that's where I remember. Yeah. yeah, I had wonderful. Spent nine years there. It was a wonderful mm -hmm. experience. Uh, Johnston at that time, it, it was a, a performing arts magnet mm -hmm. for middle school. Yep. It's now called uh, Meyerland Middle School. Before Wait, the so middle that school. one I didn't know. So Johnston is no longer Johnston. Johnston is now Meyerland Middle School. They changed the name because, you know, when uh, HISD uh, started changing names of the schools. Any school that had anything to do with the Confederate general names. What? Well, yeah. Well, Johnston was a. Uh, what, let's see. I, I, now I, the the first name escapes me. Do you remember? I was but trying. Any, to, uh, yeah, um, but in any case, yeah, we'll we'll figure that out. I'll, maybe yeah, it'll come to me. I'm checking now. Johnston <laughs> was a was a, was a confed. He was a, a general in the Confederate Army, and so HISD some years ago removed, changed the names of all of their school buildings that had mm -hmm. anything to do with the Confederacy. So now that's why it's called Meyerland. And so after I left um, Johnson, I got an opportunity to teach choir at Lamar High School in mm -hmm. HISD. I did that in one year, uh, co-teaching with Judy McEnany, huh. who uh, happened to have been the teacher that I did my student teaching with mm -hmm. when I was in uh, undergrad. And so she and I worked together for a year and I had a wonderful time at Lamar and I was perfectly happy to stay there until retirement because I really loved that school, loved that job. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, opportunity knocked and I had the <laughs> chance to go on and uh, interview for an opening at Prairie View, mm -hmm. which very interestingly is something that that was a lifelong goal. I knew as a child uh, well, I won't say from a child, but maybe by the time I got to high school that I wanted to be a 
collegiate choir director. I wanted mm-hmm. to teach them college level. And I guess, you know, when you throw it out there, you know, <laughs> they, you know, things will manifest you know, as you believe. And so I got an opportunity to do that. And uh, that was in 1996. And I have been there ever since. This is my, I just finished my, I think my 26th year. 26 years at Prairie View. Exactly. That's a long time. Yes, it is. I never would have, you know, who would have thought or who would have guessed But the years have flown by, mm-hmm. you know, when you're doing something that you really enjoy and when mm-hmm. you feel like, uh, you know, that you're fulfilling your purpose, which I have always felt as a member of the faculty at Prairie View. You know, I've had an opportunity to, to touch so many lives and to meet so many young people. Definitely. And, uh, yeah. And so that is that in itself is just very so gratifying. Man, I know so many people, you know, have so many questions about you. So I'm going to take you back because I oh, want to okay. go in some details because you touched on a lot of stuff. So I'm okay. like, yep, we're going back because I want to find out some more in detail. So okay. you were born um, in Houston in H-Town. Do you have any siblings? Yes, I do. I have a brother who is almost who's a, almost two years younger. His name is Keith, and Keith is a photographer. He has lived in New York City for ooh, over thirty years. I would mm-hmm. say about thirty-five years. Uh, he's a professional photographer, and what's interesting about that is uh, my mother always said that she wanted her children. She always wanted to be either a musician or a photographer. In her children, she got one of each. <laughs> so that's interesting. So my brother, yeah. And then I have a, ha- I had a half brother. He passed away, mm-hmm. but uh, from uh, my father's, uh, you know, previous marriage, my brother, Daryl Green. So those were my siblings, but Keith and I grew up together. So with the brothers and you don't have any sisters, do you ever wish you would have had any sisters? Oh, always. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I always wish that I'd had sisters. Uh, because, um, well, I mean, I just did, you know, and then, uh, but I tell you, I have a, a large family of first cousins. And so there were a couple of us that kind of grew up, you know, cl- as close as sisters as you can be uh, being blood sisters. So that was fun. But yeah, I always didn't w- wish I had had a sister. But the good thing about having brothers is that you always felt felt like you're protected. Protected. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, well, my older brother has passed away, but my brother Keith um, grew up. We we're close in age. We were very close growing up, you know, aside from the typical sil- uh, sibling uh, fights and <laughs> rivalry. But as adults, we've grown to be very close and we really care about each other and look out for each other. Are your parents still living? No. Uh, my father passed away uh, in 1982, long time ago. Okay. And my mother passed away in 2020. And uh, sadly, it was, you know, from COVID, you know. Wow. Uh, yeah. I before, yeah. Mm-hmm. Living in a in a in a nursing facility. And uh, back then, there was so little that was known about how that disease was spread. Mm-hmm. And so she was a victim of that. And um, yeah, so that that wow. sadly. Yeah. So Man. they're going on, she, but she did live to be 93. So, you know, she, yeah, so that's one consolation, you know, that she did live a, lo- a long, lo- a full life. Man. And she herself was a force, you know, just, you know, <laughs> she lived her life to the fullest. She lived her life out of the box and she did anything, everything she wanted to do as a person. And which is remarkable for mm-hmm. a woman who grew up in the Jim Crow South, you know, mm-hmm. when uh, if you, when you when we stop to think that, you know, people my parents age or or your grandparents age really mm-hmm. had, you know, just nothing like the kinds of uh, liberties that we have now. Exactly. Not able to, and so for it was remarkable for a woman of her age to do the things that she was that she did. So, yeah, so she was able to get educated. She had a master's degree and was about to finish a doctorate. She was a, I think she was ABD. Uh, yeah, everything but the dissertation, uh, you know, taught for many, many years. She did go back and get a, a get trained as a photographer, mm-hmm. and that was a hobby of hers. She uh, also, so she loved her pictures. She so she oh, did get a taste of the pictures thing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. She she was she always had a camera. She took lots and lots of pictures, and uh, 
and made sure that my brother and I, uh, you know, had were had, were exposed to all the things in life that she could expose us to, mm-hmm. travel and education and all those kinds of things. So. I was really, really blessed that um, and my parents, uh, you know, made sure that we wanted for nothing. Yeah. Were you and your dad pretty close? Did you get a chance to um, build a relationship with him before he passed? Yeah. Well, I, he died when I was about 25 years old. So okay. I was, you know, still a young adult. So I really never did establish an adult relationship, you know, Mm -hmm. but I definitely was daddy's girl. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Uh, And anything um, I wanted or needed, you know, uh, closeness in terms of a a daddy daughter bond, little girl bond. Mm -hmm. That's what I had with my dad. Were you and your mom pretty tight? Yeah, we were we were close. I mean, we had I, I will if, if I can say it, you know, be frank, I was closer to my dad. Of course. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> but you know, sometimes mothers and daughters have uh, you know, a little bit of conflict, but for the yeah. most part. Oh yeah. Um yeah, I was always there for her. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, she was for me. Was she um, into music at all, or was she kind of uh, influential to um, your musical love? Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I said before, she wanted to be either a musician or a photographer. As soon as she was able to, as an adult, uh, to take piano lessons, she started t- taking piano lessons. I would say, I would say she probably m- was in her thirties. She was already teaching and working. Mm-hmm and had moved to Houston, back to Houston. She was born in Houston, but her family at some point moved to Belleville, Texas, out in a very rural area. So there were no opportunities for her to study music. Okay. So when she became an adult and got into a position where she could, then she did. Mm -hmm. And so uh, she taught me piano. She was my first piano teacher. Ah. She started uh, me on piano at, I think I was five or six years old. And uh, as soon as I got to the point where, you know, I was beyond her skill level, then I went to piano lessons. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. And people listening to this, if, you know, any old time Houstonians know the name Johnson, Clayton Johnson Music Studio. That's where Mm -hmm. I took piano. It was on the corner at that time of Rosedale and Hutchins 288 Uh runs right smack dab through the middle of where that studio was during that time. And so uh, that's why I started taking piano and Miss Johnson also taught organ on that Hammond B3. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I took organ lessons, but it didn't, Uh it didn't really stick. I I can still manage, you know, if I have to uh, remember, you know, I can still (laughs) do the patterns with my feet. I I still got, you know, the, the muscle memory. (laughs) For my feet pedaling, uh, foot pedals. Yeah, so that was uh, instrumental. So my mom started me on that path. Hmm. And I knew uh, as a young child, when I started taking piano lessons, my original thought was that I would be a concert pianist because hmm. I discovered even at that young age that I was pretty good as a pianist. So that was my path until I said, you know, to, like I said, I got to high school and discovered choral music. Uh-huh. And that's so what I thought that in. I would be. A, yeah. And I went, wow, I love this, you know. And so uh, my best friend at the time, Stephanie Dory, told me about this new choir that was being started at Wheeler Avenue for young people. And Clyde Owen Jackson was the conductor. Wow. And that they needed a pianist. And that's how I wound up at Wheeler Avenue. And then Clyde Owen Jackson, um, he at the time, he was the uh, director of music. Yeah, well, at the time that I came, he he was the director of the chapel choir. He started a choir for young people, and that was at the request of Audrey Lawson, Reverend okay. Lawson's wife. Yeah, so she wanted to. She need she. Uh, there were so many young people in the in the church, mm-hmm. and this she wanted a youth choir established so that it was an outlet for the younger people. Mm-hmm. And I know during the time that I was there, there must have been 40, 40 50 kids in that choir. People wow. in that choir. Yeah. That's okay. So, because that was, I was going to ask you that um, Mm -hmm. how and where you ended up at Willer. So, Clyde uh, Owen Jackson, he was the one that kind of linked you into the chapel choir. Exactly. I started playing for his choir. I was his pianist. Wow. And uh, from then on, 
he was another influential figure in my path as a musician. Mm -hmm. He started, I learned, uh, and here's what's really, really um, important and what is just kind of blows my mind. It it wasn't until I became an adult that Mm -hmm. I realized that Clyde had gone to Tuskegee Institute. It's called Tuskegee University now. Mm -hmm. And he actually sang in the choir under William L. Dawson. And for your listeners out there, that's a major composer mm-hmm. of uh, an arranger of uh, concert spirituals for mm-hmm. choir. He also wrote a major symphony called the Negro Symphony and wrote and for all kinds of instruments. And he also was a trombone player for many uh, bands and symphony orchestras during his time. Very prolific d- uh, during the Harlem Renaissance. Well, Clyde sang in his choir at Tuskegee. And Clyde learned, under Dawson, learned all of his music, all of his works, and he brought them to Wheeler Avenue and taught them to us, the chapel choir. Wow. And we were uh, high schoolers, college students, and young adults in that choir. We learned all of William Dawson's music, uh, a lot of the music that Clyde learned when he was in college, other uh, arrangements of spirituals, Wheeler Avenue is the first place where I learned to sing and to play Messiah, Handel's Messiah, the uh, Schubert, Mass and G, uh, Vivaldi, Gloria, all those major works. I learned those at church at Wheeler Avenue, not in school. Wow. So by the time I got to high school and college, I had already performed those works at church. <laughs> and that is some that is really something. I mean, that's unusual. Uh, you know, when you think about it, especially in a, a black church. Yeah, uh, it seems a lot of people um, with Willer, I guess that was a uh, plus and a minus because some people were disappointed at how classical and spiritual based they were with their choral music because um, more people, they wanted more of the contemporary gospel um, instead of the, you know, the uh, versatility that Willer brought. But that's what I noticed right off the bat. <laughs> it was, I was like, what? how did... This is, are they singing this at, at church? <laughs> like, <that's what> they <laughs> do. <laughs> yeah. Well, Wheeler was a unique place, uh, founded by Reverend Lawson, who was himself, uh, you know, a maverick and a trailblazer in, in the city, you know, uh, founding that particular church and all that it represented. Very uh, socially conscious and active, uh, you know, in civ- and, and active in civil rights mm-hmm. movement at the time. So, yeah, it was a unique place. So it was just open to, you know, whatever. And at that time, Clyde Owen Jackson brought what he brought. And then eventually the church became more versatile and more varied in terms of music, because that's what Reverend Lawson, uh, as uh, the founder of that church, that was his vision, you know, Mm -hmm. to have a little of something for everybody. Definitely. And so, you know, there a gospel choir was formed and there was a an an a choir made up of older uh members of the church the mm-hmm. i think they were called the sanctuary choir at the time i'm, I'm f- forgetting now there's mm-hmm. so many years have gone by but they also sang hymns and a- anthems and you know so wheeler avenue became the place they became known for its uh you know excellence in music so going back i'm curious piano was your first instrument that you started yeah. learning yes and um is that when you knew that you were in love with music or when did you actually know hey I, I love music. <laughs> I think by the time I was in elementary school, I knew I was my path was music. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there were just so many, so many people and so many situations that uh, came across a, along my journey that just kind of led me that way. I, I had an innate love for it. I had a talent for it. People like Clyde Owen Jackson were were placed in my life, uh, and even before Clyde. Um, when I was in elementary school at Turner Elementary, mm-hmm. we had a really fine choir director. And she was also a member of uh, Wheeler. She's still uh, still living, Vivian Harrison. Mm-hmm. She's still a member of Wheeler. And she was my first, uh, actually, first choir director. Mm-hmm. And I remember singing, she taught arrangements of choruses from Messiah to treble voices that were in elementary school choir. 
Wow. So I learned to sing Hallelujah Chorus when I was maybe in the fourth or fifth grade, maybe even before that. Uh, so she had a fine choir. I mean, in those days, it was not unusual to have really high quality music in all of the black schools. Wow. You know, so all the really strong, fine teachers were, you know, we were all concentrated in our communities. Hmm. Uh, and I can remember at the same time that I was at Turner, uh, Miss Frank, Rita Frank, was mm -hmm. the music teacher at Lockhart Elementary. And she and Miss Harrison were good friends and they collaborated on things. I remember doing a musical, some sort of a musical version of Goldilocks and the Three Bears <laughs> that, that Lo uh, Lockhart and Turner kids combined to put on this, this production. And so, yeah, th there, were that, there was a lot of, uh, we had some, uh, we were exposed to really fine music during those, those days. Did you grow up in church um, as a child as well? I did. Uh, my mother was a member of St. John. Back then it was called St. John on Dowling. I know, yeah. Uh, John. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, you know, that's Dowling that's is now called Emancipation. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, so that's where I was baptized. And that's where I grew up uh, going to church until I was introduced to Clyde. And then uh, I left there to go to uh, Wheeler well, Avenue. And my mom okay. became an Episcopalian. <laughs> She oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so that she didn't want to come to Willard? No, she, uh, for some reason, she was just attracted more to, she liked quiet, reflective services. And at that time, that's what she got out of the Episcopal Church at St. James. She that's liked, the rich, she explained to me that she liked the quiet, solemn services and that she liked the ritual that mm -hmm. we found in churches like um, Episcopal churches and Catholic churches. She liked huh. that. Okay. Yeah. I'm curious, did your parents make you practice or did you practice on your own? Oh, no, I play the piano all the time. Oh, okay. I, yeah, so my mom bought whatever she bought me. There was a uh, a library of books. You know, remember, you, you might be too young to remember this, but people used to buy encyclopedias. No, oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> okay, yeah. So that was the internet of our day. That uh -huh. was Google. Yeah, when you when you Google, you Google. Was like, <laughs> yeah, you know, that was exactly. <laughs> yeah, and so there were also music libraries like that, like encyclopedias in volumes of books that had music from different periods, different styles. So my mom bought a volume of those. There must have been about. 15 or 20 books in that volume. And I would just sit and go through all of them. Wow. And uh, when I was taking piano lessons, uh, I, I just played all the time. That's what I did. Hmm. You know, we play outside. I did like to play outside. Uh, hmm. you know, there were lots of kids in my on my block. Hmm. But for the most part, um, I was playing the piano. And then I would buy muse popular books at the time, like the Jackson 5 was... Uh, yep. Yeah, I was, I was about the same age as Michael Jackson and all that group, mm -hmm. you know. And so those books would be, uh, their songs would be uh, published, and I would play those. Uh, Burt Bacharach and Hal David books, and Dion Warwick was really something that I remember really loving. And I used to make my brother learn the songs. And my brother was a drummer. Oh, yeah, okay. So, so he played drums. Yeah, so his drums, his trap set was set up in the in the living room. And next to the piano, and we would just play, jam. <laughs> so you were allowed to listen to secular music. It was oh, absolutely, a yeah, okay. oh yeah, yeah. I lived in a home. My parents, my mother, my, you know, my dad didn't really uh, attend church, mm -hmm. but my mom did, and she we, she was a Sunday school teacher. We grew up in church, but not. Uh, not all day, uh, every day. We, we allowed <laughs> us, you know, we we had we had the freedom. We love secular music, and we danced to Motown and sang. Learned all of the everything that was on the radio during that mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Any uh, favorite singers or singing groups that you grew up on that you can think of? Oh my gosh, all the Motown, all the Philly stacks, Philly sound people. Uh, uh -oh. Let me see. Yeah. Let me let me let me just think. I remember the. the <laughs> I remember loving the dramatics. I don't know if you know oh, who they are. I yeah, yeah. Go outside in the rain. Uh huh. Uh, uh, all the Motown groups. 
<clears throat> especially, I, especially like the four tops. For some mm -hmm. reason, they were really appealing to me. I like the guy groups. Okay. And of course, everybody liked the Temptations, but I'm just trying yep. to, to think about what really stood out. And then I also, by the time I was a teenager, we were, you know, into this. That was the era of the 70s funk. Mm -hmm. And so heavy, 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 you know, lover of funk and, dan you know, dance music and stuff like that. Commodores, <laughs> uh, Isley Brothers. Uh -oh. uh, and believe it or not, one of my, my favorite funk group was uh, Average White Band. Every, I, I don't know if I know them by name. Okay, I probably know their music. <laughs> you probably do. Schoolboy Crush. Uh, mm -hmm. Look them up. You'll you'll recognize the music. And there's okay. a particular album. It's a live album. I think it's called Person to Person. Mm -hmm. Check it out. Average white band. They were from um, England. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So during the 60s and 70s, there was a British craze. You've heard, you know, the Beatles, mm -hmm. right? The Rolling Stones. Yeah. So they, they emulated black groups. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. No, so there were many, many British groups that, that played and copied the Motown sound and, and then later the funk groups. But yeah, uh, lots of them. Uh, Michael McDonald came mm -hmm. along later. You probably know that name. Yep, of course. Yep. Got to know yeah. that. I know you love music. Uh, you got a chance to play outside a little bit from what you said, outside of practicing. Did you um, get into any kind of like sports or anything like that? Or was it straight music? Oh, it was music. Straight yeah. music. Because, well, first of all, well, I mean, I enjoy, I mean, I, I was very social as a kid. Uh, when, when, of course, I went to HSPVA, so there were no, no sports. Mm -hmm. But my friends and other family members went to Lamar High School, so I would attend their games. Okay. Uh, when I was at Lanier, you know, I went to all those games. Mm -hmm. But my so, but socially, oh yeah, I was into music. Uh, okay. When I was in high school, uh, HSPVA, they used to get free tickets to concerts and things all the time. So we would go to the opera, and back then you have to dress up. Mm -hmm. The women wore long formal dresses, and men had wore suits. And so we went to the opera. We went to. Um, I saw Leontine Price. Hmm. When I was in high school, and then of course we went to all of the concerts. Mm -hmm. Earth, Wind, and Fire. I saw Earth, Wind, and Fire every time they came to town. Uh, the uh, Jackson Five, uh, the Commodores, Michael Henderson, the Isley Brothers. Went to all those concerts too. Oh wow! Boy, I you, I wish, I wish <laughs> <laughs> everything. Well, and then it did not cost a fortune to see these people back then. Mm -hmm. You know. I, pres I remember a Jackson 5 concert for maybe I, a ticket was $7. Hmm. <laughs> maybe I paid $12 to see Earth, Wind and & Fire. And oh. those concerts were, you know, where Joel Olstein's church is. Um, mm -hmm. That used to be the summit. The summit, yeah. 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 That used to be a concert venue. And the, and the basketball, <clears throat> the basketball arena for the Rocket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so there are lots, a lot of concerts there and uh, at the Coliseum downtown. Now the uh, Hobby Center is built, is, is there where the Coliseum used to be when I was there. I didn't know that either. I've been gone a long time. I'm thinking all that stuff's still there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Other than the summit, I knew that was that turned into Old Steen's Church, but I didn't yeah. know about the Coliseum. Yeah. So did you, um, oh, I guess we guys talk about it a little bit. Did you get into boys in middle school? So, I mean, well, of course. <laughs> did, you, yes. did you date a little bit? Or we... <laughs> yeah. Well, back then, you know, our, our parents did not allow us to date until maybe, you know, later in high school, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I had a, I, I dated the same boy all through high school. That's a PBA. He went there uh -huh. too. Yeah, he went there too. He was a musician. I don't want to call his name. You want to call you? So don't give I'm not gonna call his name. <laughs> he's kind of, you know, he's kind of known. So we were, yeah, we, you know, we were friends. I, like, typical teenage girl. Yeah, I like the mm -hmm. boys. You went to prom? Yes, I did. I went to his. He was a grade ahead of me, so I went to his senior prom when I was in the eleventh grade, and then I went to my senior prom. Mm -hmm. And uh, our prom was at the. Shamrock Hilton Hotel, mm -hmm. which is where uh, it's it's it was a famous hotel back then. It was built by some famous Hollywood gazillionaire, and uh, <laughs> it was very swank. 
uh, hotel. And it's it's the locate. It is on. It was on the corner of, I want to say Fannin and Holcomb. Mm-hmm. It's where it's the medical center. There's some medical center buildings there on that site. And of the band that played for our um, prom was the Cashmere Stage Band. They were mm-hmm. world renowned at that time under Conrad Johnson. Is that you ever heard that name? Not Con- I haven't heard of Conrad Johnson. Yeah. So Cashmere High School over in Cashmere Gardens mm-hmm. had a world renowned stage band. Uh, and uh, Conrad Johnson, who was a jazz icon, was their mm-hmm. teacher. And because we were HSPBA, uh, you know, our, so that our kids could attend, you know, the the prom, uh, Cashmere Band played for us. I remember oh, wow. two years in a row. Yeah. Hmm. And did you dance? Uh, do you know how to dance? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, of exactly. course I do. Boy, don't you yeah. know? <laughs> and as a matter of fact, maybe in another life, I, I probably would want to be a dancer. Just always mm-hmm. just always drawn to the arts and creativity, you know? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I loved to dance. In fact, I used to cor- do the choreography. You remember at HSPVA, there were the young performers? Yep, YP. That yeah, I was in to, YP. yeah, I used to help do the choreography. Uh, and when uh, Jean Galloway left HSPVA to go teach at another school, I would go, you know, a couple of times I went and choreographed her. Uh, she called it, a, what were they called back then? Um, show choir is what they called them, I okay. think, later. Yeah. I didn't, okay. So you were, boy, I didn't know that because I was wondering, I was like, does she have like rhythm or she's just straight pianist and director? Oh, no, I had my fun, and my, no. you know, as a teenager <laughs> and, you know, young person. But, oh, yeah. And I still enjoy going out. I'm not, I don't particularly going enjoy going out dancing, but I do like to go and hear live music and any kind of live entertainment. I still, you know, love to go to concerts. I'm trying to remember what the last concert was I went to. Uh, you know, since the pandemic, I think yeah, the last concert I went to was maybe, maybe Gregory Porter. Gregory yeah. Porter. He's kind of an R, kind of a jazz, more jazz R and B. It's a little uh, kind of eclectic music. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he did have a hit with uh, Layla Hathaway maybe three or four years ago. Because most of the time I don't know their names, a lot of the artists' names, because so many of them. So I end up knowing their music, but I don't keep up with their names. I've always yeah. been bad with that. Yeah. Well, he's one of those artists that you would probably hear more on. You remember KTSU Radio here? Mm-hmm. Rather than hear, you probably would not hear him so much on mainstream radio. But, you know, okay. some of those, uh, yeah. Does your uh, husband, does he play any instruments, musician guy? No, he's not musical at all, <laughs> which I think makes for, made for a good, that, you know, kept us together. Because sometimes mm-hmm. my friends who are, are you know, couple couples who are musicians tell me all the time that uh, sometimes that's a, a struggle mm-hmm. because they are, Critical of each other or yeah. Yeah, opinionated yeah. about certain things or you, or you talk shop all the time. So I enjoy, you know, having to, you know, c- coming home and not having to talk shop. You know, we have other interests mm-hmm. together. You know, he's a, he loves outdoors and bike riding and camping uh, and the beach. Okay. But That's he cool. is a, uh, he's into finance. He's a mortgage lender. He has a mortgage company. Oh, okay. Yeah, so nothing to do with the music, but he does no, love not even close. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> but I always tell him he missed his calling because he really has a great singing voice, and I think mm-hmm. he has a great ear. Uh, never, never participated in any music ensembles, but when I hear him singing around the house, mm-hmm. it's a really nice resonant. Uh, baritone voice. And yeah, I, I was going to yeah. ask you, bass or baritone? Yeah, yeah, baritone. Mm-hmm. His speaking voice is really booming and resonant. And that's one of the first things people notice about him is, whoa, that voice, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they probably thinking that he's a uh, bass baritone that you marry and both uh-huh. y'all musicians yeah. be like, nope, he's not uh-huh. a musician uh-huh. at uh-huh. all. Can't find, can't find middle C on the piano, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that, that, that's disrespectful. Now look, <laughs> you say at least he said my wife. She uh, she's a musician. She at least got to teach me where middle C is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. funny. And you met him where? Okay, so back in the day, we used to hang out. People my age used to hang out at we called it the Hill. 
When I say the hill, you know what I'm talking about in Houston? Is that what we used to call Hippity Hill down the Hill. Medical Center? You called it Hippity Hill too? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, so where Miller Outdoor Theater, theater yep. is. And so people used to, we used to hang out there on the weekends, especially Sundays. So I had gone, uh, one of my friends had uh, sung her senior recital at U of H. And I had gone to that recital and then came home and a friend of mine, uh, a girl who lived in the neighborhood, we decided to go hang out at Hippie Hill that Sunday afternoon. And Jerry and his friend, and by the way, Jerry also grew up in my neighborhood, but I never met him, never knew him. <laughs> had all the same friends. And uh, so the friend that he was with, I knew, because we had gone to Lanier together. Hmm. And so we just kind of ran into each other in the hill on that hippie hippie hill. Mm -hmm. And uh, we met that day and I think we've been together ever since. So he, yeah. uh, he hollered at you or you hollered at him? No, he hollered at me. I didn't holler, <laughs> you didn't holler at no boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, so that was in Get, get Ready 19... 78. Okay, three years after I was born. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> 78. Yeah. You and, knew that uh, he was the one? Yeah, we, I think we knew. We both knew. But mm -hmm. we dated a very long time because we were really young. You know, okay. I was. we were in college. I think I might have been a sophomore in college or something like that. So we just we dated a long time, and then we didn't get married until eighty four. What yeah. school did he go to? In, uh, college? Um, he grew up. Uh, he went to Texas Southern. Okay. Uh, he grew, he went to Lamar and Yates. Ah, okay. Third yeah, Ward. And, and then yeah, went on Third the Ward. Yeah, and he went to. Uh, I think he went to Ryan Middle School. Oh, okay. Yeah. He played ball. No, he did not. Mm -hmm. He, uh, I, well, I think he did tell me he played baseball for a while. Okay. But by the time I, I met him, he was just, a, he was a working guy. You know? Okay. Yeah. So you went to Prairie View and then he went to Texas Southern. Yeah. Well, I went to University of Houston. Oh, okay. He went to Texas Southern. And I okay. went to Prairie View for my master's later. Oh, okay. So you were at U of H for your undergrad. Yeah. Did you ever think about majoring in anything other than music? Never. Uh, you already knew. You already knew huh. from yeah from when I was a child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never thought about anything else. Maybe for a split second, I do remember back then. Um, people used to always ask kid. You know, whenever kids uh, were asked, "What do you want to be? What do you want to be?" Boys always said, "I want to be a policeman or a fireman." Girls always said, "I want to be a teacher or a nurse." And I do remember saying something like wanting to be a nurse, but never in my heart. <laughs> Did I ever mean it? You was just saying it. Because <laughs> uh -huh, that's what kids, yeah. But yeah, I always knew I was going to be a musician. And But mm -hmm. by the time I was old enough uh, to be aware of what it meant to major in something in college, mm -hmm. that's when I knew, oh yeah, I'm going to be a, a musician, major in music in college. So you were at University of Houston. I'm curious because I was noticing on your information on Prairie View, it says that you would play Sigma Alpha Iota. A yeah, so, yeah. It, it's called Sigma Alpha Iota is how Iota. we pronounce it. And uh, yeah, it's a music fraternity for women. I, I know a lot of musicians are probably aware of, for the men, their fraternity is called Phi Mu Alpha. Mm -hmm. There are some band fraternities, Tau Beta Sigma. Yeah, so, uh, and actually I did not do pledge that in college I became a, a Sigma Alpha Iota member at Prairie View because okay. we started, I started the chapter at Prairie oh, View. Oh, so wow. So we're, we're only one of a few HBCUs that have a Sigma Alpha Iota chapter. And we uh, started that, that chapter was chartered in 2003, I believe. Man, so how hard was that trying to get it um, up and running on well, Prairie View campus? It was, it took a lot of work and it took a long time because several, several of the students, it was actually initiated by students. Uh, there was a girl named, um, I think her name was Cassandra. She had an interest in it and brought the brought that to my attention. 
And so for a while, we kind of started, you know, looking into it and doing things, but it actually came to fruition through the hard work of Christian Haley. I don't Mm. know if you remember her, Uh, but in any case, Christian uh, was a student who really stuck with it and rallied a bunch of girls. So our charter line was 29 girls. That's unheard of. Wow. 29 girls. 29 girls. Yeah. Wow. And so, yeah, so we're the Lambda Zeta chapter of Sigma Alpha Yoda. Wow. And I'm still to this day the uh, faculty advisor. Did you um, ever think about pledging uh, one of these sororities for the Divine Nine? Yeah, I did. I thought about it until my friend was pledging Delta Sigma Theta one year, and I said, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> She's but like, I, yeah, she said, no, I'm not oh, no. doing it. Yeah, but I saw what she was going through, and she was a year ahead of me in college. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But I, um, but I, I wanted to. If I had pledged, I wanted to pledge, um, AKA, and uh, but I just, yeah, when I saw that, I, it, it just, you know, because as a musician, I had a lot of other groups and involvements with people. So it really was not all that uh, appealing to me to go through all that for a sorority. But, uh, and then after I graduated from college, I said, told myself I would join a graduate chapter and I just kept procrastinating and you know, so many mm-hmm. years have gone by and I just never did follow through. But yeah, I thought, I thought about it. Do you remember your first time that you actually conducted a whole piece? You know, I started and had opportunities at Wheeler Avenue under Clyde Owen Jackson. Oh, okay. Yeah, so whenever he would be out, um, there was a period of time when he took a job out of state and he left the choir there with me for a few months. And that's when I got my feet wet as a conductor. Ah. So I had been watching him in all of those years. And so it just kind of felt natural. And then uh, I'm trying to remember my very first concert. I guess when I, my first teaching job, elementary choir, mm-hmm. elementary school choir, maybe my first major concert that I conducted as a professional was there and probably with Sing Boys of Houston. Yeah, but it, it never, it feels natural. I love it. So I don't get nervous. Now I would get nervous as a solo singer or as a pianist, but never as a conductor. That's interesting. Yeah, and some people are just terrified because when I have student conductors uh, at Prairie View, they are just, some of them are just terrified in front of the car. Yes, <laughs> it is very intimidating. Yeah. You know, for the first time, you're standing and you got everybody looking at you. Exactly. And, uh, you know, expecting uh, your leadership and your direction. And so you have to be on, you have to know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You have to be prepared. You know, you have to know the music inside out. Uh, you need to know how to show gestures that evoke what you want and that that interpret the music. Wow. Yeah, I always thought that was so impressive how you guys do that. Because I that's one of the things I, I was nervous about because my degree is in music, but it's liberal arts. So all of my stuff is, you know, engineering, production and all that stuff. And uh-huh. I thought about the teaching thought uh-huh. about going and conducting. I was like, oh, but getting up there <laughs> and leading those, ah, oh, no, no, that's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, and I think it takes a certain kind of personality too, because mm-hmm. we, we conductors, uh, you know, that's one of the things we all laugh about is we have controlling personalities. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it works. Yeah, <laughs> I guess you gotta have it. Control. You gotta yeah. have it. Well, we appreciate you. Everything you've done, I know me, personally, like I said, uh, you sold a lot into my life, my my foundational uh, music basis. You started all that and helped to uh, help it to grow, and and I appreciate it. Well, that's wonderful. I I appreciate hearing that. I'm happy to know that. Yes, ma'am. But I do have a few ending questions, and it's supposed to be the fun part. So okay. you're gonna pick one or the other. I'm okay. not going to give you any details. I'm just going to give you two options. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anita Baker or Sade? Sade. Okay. 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 It's a vibe with her. Mm-hmm. And it's also her band. You know, oh, yeah. You know, I, as a musician, you know, I'm listening for not just, you know, for a whole lot of things. Uh-huh. Her band is her band is awesome. You yeah. know, it's, it's got a... They are Europeans, and so it kind of brings a different kind of uh, uh, sensibility in terms of harmonies 
and just the way they play, the, their style of playing. Earth, Wind, and Fire are the Isley Brothers. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Mm. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Mm -hmm. The musician chick. Prince or Michael Jackson? Prince. Mm -hmm. Prince. I'm yeah. curious. Okay. Spiritual music or gospel music? Spirituals. Okay, okay, I figured that though. I mm -hmm. figured that. Uh -huh. And I chose Earth, Wind, and Fire over Isley Brothers again. It's because of the musianship, that band. Yeah, uh -huh. I've always yeah. been a fan of that band. She, they're uh -huh. always jamming. Oh yeah, you know, very creative. Even the lyrics, mm -hmm. the melodies, you know, that just that music that is put together, the whole package, is very unique and creative. Isley awesome. Brothers, yeah, yeah, they're good too, but they're more of a. You know, they're funk and R&B. There's a, a, a complexity to Earth, Wind mm -hmm. & Fire's music. And same with Prince. I mean, mm -hmm. just genius. Michael Jackson yep. too, but Prince. No. Yeah, Prince, that musicianship, yeah. that writing yeah. ability. Yeah, all of that. Entertainment, so, all of it, yeah. So with gospel music versus spiritual music, sometimes I remember growing up and I remember at PVA, they told us that we couldn't sing gospel music because it be, it's too damaging, too stressful on the vocal cords. Um, do you still stand by that now? No. And and people would say that because they did not know how to. If people told you that, it's because they didn't know how to um, teach you to negotiate, you know, to teach you how to use your voice in a way that was healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, no, I don't believe that at all, because, you know, we do gospel music in the choir at PV as well. Mm -hmm. I do gospel music in my choir at church. Uh, you know, there are some uh, choirs that, yeah, maybe they do overuse the voice or use it in un unhealthy ways. Mm -hmm. But the, the music, I mean, it, that's our heritage. Definitely. You know, gospel music comes out of spirituals. I yep. say that I prefer spirituals because that's what I grew up on. Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't become, act, you know, really involved in gospel music until I was an adult. Uh, uh, oh, Happy Day was by the, the Hawkins family. That was uh, the first gospel piece that I recall that came out commercially on commercial radio. And by that time, I think I might have been in middle school at that time. But I grew up learning spirituals from Clyde Owen Jackson, hearing them, you know, college choirs. My mom took us to a college choir concert any time uh, a, a con college choir came through town on tour. So that was in my ear and in my head. That's what I learned. And that's mm -hmm. why, you know, and it's just our rich heritage. I mean, the fact that that music grew out of the enslaved Africans, you mm -hmm. know, it's just such a rich uh, body of music and it just mm -hmm. means so much. And so I just love it. I'm curious of your opinion. Do you suggest whenever you sing spirituals that you keep the original uh, dialect that they oh, good hungry. question. Good mm -hmm. question. Um, I think that uh, I have two two thoughts on that. Uh, if it's written in the music, go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. But if you but we're so far removed from uh, that language, that dialect, that some people just go on and and sing standard English, and I don't I don't have a problem with that. If you look at some of the the more uh, current arrangers of gospel music, they don't write in dialect. Only you find the dialect in the music and the arrangements that were written by composers that were more that were not as far removed, like composers from the uh, Harlem Renaissance period. Mm -hmm. uh, Hall Johnson, who collected those those melodies, and he heard their their mothers and their grandparents sing those songs using mm -hmm. that dialect. Yeah, so uh, if I'm conducting and if dialect is written, yes, I will have the group sing dialect. Mm -hmm. But I don't have a problem with people who choose to, you know, change it to standard English. Do you sing? You're alto? Yeah. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I couldn't remember. I was like, I, from your voice, I was like, yeah, she sounds like an alto. I'm sure you probably could sing um, tenor as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I have always sung alto in choir. I probably could. I mean, you know, I could do second soprano and maybe some soprano, but mm -hmm. because I played piano and I had a good ear when I was young, choir directors always put, because all girls are sopranos when you're little girls, you're soprano. Mm -hmm. uh, but I always got put in the alto section because I could read. And it just kind of uh, always happened that way. 
but uh yeah i think i, I do have a, a you know a mezzo range mm-hmm. mezzo soprano. do you still do you teach any private lessons right now no <laughs> I'm not cut out for private, yeah, for teaching. Private. Yeah, that take that requires a lot of patience. Yeah, yeah. I did it when I was in college. I did that to support myself. Um, mm-hmm. But but when I started teaching at Prairie View, there's really no time to do private. You know, the commute by itself kind of cancels that out. Time to do it. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Because my son, he's six, about to be seven. Um, when he I first introduced him to the usual, you know, understanding the keys and the uh, notes, the note names. Um, so he right now we're doing the very basics uh, rhythm. We're doing scales and he knows his note name. So, you know, he sings. Of course, he got to sing scales, too. I make him do that. So oh. he understands the basics of it. He still doesn't know why he's doing it. He's mm-hmm. more or less. Daddy's making me do this. Uh-huh. Uh, here we go again. So he hasn't bought into that. Uh, uh-huh. I sound pretty good yet. He kind of actually he caught himself when I recorded him because I started recording him so he could hear what he sounded like and see what he sounded like. So mm-hmm. now it's like he's getting it like, oh, daddy, can you record me doing it? So I'm like, uh-huh, oh. you're getting a little bird, a little a little bit of the bug. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, that's awesome, my friend. That's wonderful. So yeah, we'll that's see. a good point. Well, you're better than me. I was not ever able to teach my own kids. I had to. I sent them to, had to private <laughs> teachers. Yeah. <laughs> so your kids don't play um, any instruments. They did growing up, but you know they just never. It it wasn't a you know a passion or anything they play. wanted to do for life. Yeah, but all through school they all played. Yeah, Jill mm-hmm. played piano and cello, and she went to Johnston. Okay. And uh, Jerry played saxophone in Mr. Green's band. Remember uh, Mr. Yeah. Green, the band director? Uh-huh. And uh, piano mm-hmm. um, with Miss Volsey and Miss Hogg, Miss Grosscoat. Do you still keep in touch with any of them? Uh, unfortunately, Miss well, Miss Grosscoat and I are still friends. Miss Hogg, was she Miss Hogg when you were in school? Yeah. Yeah, Miss Hogg. We're still friends. Uh, Miss uh, Volsey uh, passed away in November. Oh. I did not know that. Yeah, and I yeah. Oh man. Yeah, yeah it was tragic. Yeah. Ah, cause I, you know, I was thinking I was gonna, you know, try to find her too, and and um, and sit down with her. And I'm sorry that I didn't get a chance to ever yeah. uh, tell her thanks, cause she she touched a whole bunch of kids. She sure did. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so it it was a a sad, you know, and tragic thing. But uh, yeah, she she's sorely missed. Yeah. Boy, boy, boy. Do you think Miss uh Miss Pat Bonner would be open to this? Oh yeah. <laughs> call, yeah, you need to call Miss Bonner. Let me know how you know if you need to know how to contact her. Yeah, I'll de- I'm gonna definitely reach out to you and see if uh, you can give her my number. I'll you know give her I, you know if she's okay with me reaching out to her. Yeah. Um, and see if she'd be willing to sit down for an hour and yeah. and, po- and kind of poke her brain a little bit. Uh huh. Oh yeah. You know she. She has lots of stories. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming on. It's been a pleasure. I I still got more questions, but I ain't gonna hold you too much longer. So um, well, we can do a, t- a part two whenever you you know whenever you want to. We'll do a Definitely. part two. Like I said, I appreciate you coming on. Um, man, it's been a pleasure, and you have a good evening. Thank you so much, Efren. My pleasure. All right. I'll All talk right. to you later. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.